But let's first have a look at magnetic field strength from a textbook and where it says that the strength is represented by the symbol B. We use the unit Tesla, abbreviation T, and it's also known as flux density. So we know that when the magnetic field lines are close together, the magnetic field is stronger. And also the strength of the magnetic field is known as flux density. But then we have a new term, which is magnetic flux. And magnetic flux is not the same thing as magnetic field strength. It's not the same thing as flux density. Magnetic flux can be explained as when a metal or a conductor cuts into a magnetic field, we know that there is a current induced and the magnetic flux changes. So magnetic flux can also be defined by a formula. The symbol for magnetic flux looks like this. The unit is Weber and the abbreviation for the unit is WB. So we can go and say that magnetic flux is equal to the product of the perpendicular component of the magnetic field strength and the area. And then at the end we have this cos theta. With cos theta, this theta angle is the angle between the magnetic field lines. So this theta is the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal. And this normal we draw on the surface of the object. Whether it's a circle or a rectangle, doesn't matter. We draw this as a dotted line. So for example, if this was a part of my coil, I can go and draw my normal at a 90 degree angle. And that's very important to understand as we move forward. So if we look at this formula, we can see that this angle has a huge effect on the magnetic flux. If we have our magnetic field lines, and I'm going to just indicate direction here on the edge, and we insert this coil into the magnetic field. Remember that this is actually in three dimensions. So that coil is cutting into the magnetic field lines. If we now go and we draw our normal, and we go and calculate this angle theta, we can see that the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal is going to be zero degrees. If you substitute that into your formula, cos zero gives you a value of one. If you now go and let's say turn this coil so that it's parallel to the magnetic field lines, you then go and draw your normal, and now we go and we measure the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal. And we see that this angle is now 90 degrees. Cos 90 degrees gives you zero. Anything in between that, whether it's 30 degrees, 40, 50, doesn't matter, will be giving you, when you take cos of that angle, will be giving you a value between zero and one. So we see the larger the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal, the smaller the magnetic flux. We see that the smaller the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal, the larger the magnetic flux. Remember that this area is calculated in square meters, so make sure that you are aware of where they perhaps give you millimeters or centimeters to convert it correctly. Also make sure you know your formula for area, and then also remember that instead of Weber, sometimes they can try and confuse you and give you Weber as Tesla square meters. It means the same thing, basically.